This is the classical looking appearance for just about any exocrine gland in the entire body. You can see that towards the periphery, there's a loose fibrous capsule. You can see that the gland itself is separated into these lobules by strands of connective tissue, some of which are a little bit thicker than others. You can see uh, in this particular case, probably as an incidental finding, that there's also a small lymph node within the body of this particular exocrine gland because it seems to have the uh, follicles uh, orientated towards the uh, external cortex. And then you have more uh, sinuses here oriented towards the uh, medulla. This uh, exocrine gland uh, and the uh, lobule that you see here and the smaller lobules separated by smaller amounts of connective tissue uh, like any other gland in the body, has both an acinar or alveolar compartment as well as ducts because the part of the, any exocrine gland that secretes the material is an acinus or an alveolus. And then the, uh, strictly the transportation portion uh, of the uh, secreted material is the ducts. Ducts can be intralobular, like all of these that you see here, or they could be between lobules, like you see here and here, or interlobular. In this particular exocrine gland, you could see that almost all of the secretory units are serous rather than mucus because they don't stain like mucus in any way. In addition, you could see some interlobular ducts and between the labials, like right here, you could see, and I'm sorry, these were intralabular, and this is interlabular, or between labials. In addition, we will now zero in on the smallest uh, functional units of the gland, called the acinus or alveolus. And they are separated into small groups, like here. There might be 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 20 cells. There's another one there. There's another one there. There's another one there. There's another one there. These are all acini, and he, the nuclei here are the actual uh, nuclei of the individual secretion cells of this particular exocrine glands, which is 100% or virtually 100% serous. Here are some intra lobular ducts. In this particular uh, organ, which is the parotid gland, one of the salivary glands, in fact the only salivary gland that's 100% serous, the intralobular uh, ducts, intralobular, can appear to have a very more thickened, uh, brighter, uh, slightly streaked cytoplasm and they are called uh, striated ducts and in addition the striated ducts are the most common type of duct but you may see a smaller duct like here or perhaps here in which the cells are not quite so foamy and tall and they're called intercalated ducts and on this type of stain it may be difficult to differentiate the, between the two but the majority of these interlobular ducts are striated ducts and I wish I could go higher power because if you look closely you see these little striations here out in the cytoplasm like here and here but the cells which don't have the ducts which don't have much cytoplasm like here and perhaps here are more likely to be intercalated ducts and once again you could see that uh, you have these strands of connective tissue separating or defining labials and they get bigger and bigger. And sometimes you'll see a duct that's completely within one of these fibrous septae, and it's definitely not within the labial, so it has to be interlabular or interlabular, I N T E R labular. And that's what this is. This would be almost virtually unidentifiable from a pancreas, believe it or not, except for a couple of minor features. The most obvious one is that there are absolutely no islets of Langerhans within the uh, parotid gland. The parotid gland is one of the three 
major uh, non-accessory salivary glands, and it is the only one which is 100% serous. Thank you very much.